Following the start of the Kenya-Uganda railway construction and the arrival of the civil engineer in charge, Lieutenant Colonel John Patterson, in March 1898 was the beginning of the most unimaginable events in the small region of Tsavo, Kenya, as just a few days after the lieutenant's arrival, one of his porters went missing, and soon after a search was carried out, all that was retrieved was his maimed corpse. With only one culprit in mind, Patterson set out his next day to capture the animal responsible for Porter's death. But instead of finding the beast, Patterson was welcomed by a gruesome sight. Lying around him were bodies of different people, most of which were villagers living in that area. After the first attack came many more following during nine months, as the Tsavo lions formed the habit of going into the railway workers' camps in the thick of the night and dragging as many victims as they could from the tents as their screams echoed into the night. According to one of the workers, bones, flesh, skin, and blood, they devoured all and left not a trace behind them. These lions tore their victims limb by limb and devoured all that there was of them, leaving not even the bones as most lions would. As this continued to be the order of the day, or rather night, for the railway workers, it was nothing but pure horror, as they watched their friends and brothers get pulled into the dark by those beasts never to be seen again. The best the rail workers could do was attempt to mount defenses to somehow stop the terrifying predator. And so they started off with the night curfews and sentinels, but no one was confident enough to volunteer. Then there was the idea of holding campfires and beating drums in the hopes of scaring the predators away, but that was also to be no avail. Considering that none of their initial plans worked out as planned, they decided to try out something different, something that would directly cause harm to the beast if it ever came close to any of them. So they built up homemade barbed wire fences with whistle-thorn trees. But that eventually became a means of sport for the Savo lions, as they managed to either leap over the thorns or crawl through them. These predators caused great terror and chaos, not just for the rail workers, but for the entire region of Savo. At one point, to escape one of the savage attacks, many of the workers decided to find refuge on a particular tree, which ended up falling to the ground. Fortunately for these ones, the lion had already picked out a less agile victim for the night. As terrifying as this continued to become, the railway workers started evacuating the area in the hundreds, given the hostile work environment. This really wasn't much of an issue, except for the fact that the work had to be put to a halt. This then triggered the British colonial to send in officials, so that they could help and the project could be resumed. They were convinced that these officials would be the perfect men to take down the bloodthirsty beasts. But that same evening, as the distinct officer, Mr. Whitehead, and his assistant, Abdullah, arrived at the train department, they were immediately attacked. And while the district officer was able to escape alive with only four claw marks down his back, his assistant, Abdullah, was killed by the lion. Seeing how unsuccessful this turned out, more officials were sent in Savo, alongside 20 armed Indian infantrymen, all with one aim, to kill the man-eating beast that had become the region's biggest terror. The Savo Lions, aptly named The Ghost and the Darkness. This, however, turned out to be of no use also, as these smart creatures avoided their hunters. All this while they already had someone with a level of experience in their mind who turned out to be the project lead and supervisor, Lieutenant Colonel John Patterson. Aside from his engineering expertise, Patterson gained some experience hunting tigers during his military service in India. So, with the same tactics as the lions stalked him, he did the same. He began to stalk them, just the same as he set up traps in all of the areas he could think of, even going as far as hiding out in trees to create an ambush for them. Following a good number of unsuccessful attempts, Patterson was able to get a clean shot at one of the lions at its hind legs, as it escaped with a badly injured leg. Fast forward to December of 1898. Finally, Patterson was able to kill one of the man-eaters, the first of them. The first Savo lion clocked in at a mass of 9 feet and 8 inches, requiring 8 men to carry its lifeless body back to the camp. In the space of about 20 days following the death of the first man-eater, the second lion was shot twice before Patterson could kill it with three more rifle shots. 
According to Patterson, the lion had died gnawing on a fallen tree branch as it tried to reach him. And that was the end of the mainless man-eating Savo lions, as they had both been successfully killed. Following their deaths, the railway bridge construction resumed, and in the space of about two months, all of the work had been completed. With no one beating humans at being the number one reigning force of destruction, the same bridge was destroyed less than 20 years later during World War I. And as for the Savo lions, Patterson went ahead and kept their skins as rugs at his house for a period of time before he eventually sold those skins and skulls of the Savo man-eater, which were still in his possession to the field of Chicago, to where they remain to this day, secure and on display. Still, even after centuries passed, everyone still wonders what drove these animals to their strange lust for human blood. And over time, as people have continued to wonder, theories have been put forward to at least make sense of the horrific events that occurred in Savo. One of the popular theories that was put forward was the one reasonable reason for lions hunting humans. It was that they were, in one way or another, lacking of their main food source. And this was based on the fact that at the time, the Savo region was experiencing a 13-year-long drought. Unlike other African plains, this area was generally drier and a lot hotter, which explained why the male lion, like these two, were maneless. Coupled with the intense drought in the area, they were also experiencing an intense outbreak of rinderpest, which is a cattle virus that most likely killed off a large amount of the lion's food supply, leaving them with no other choice than to feed on humans. In contrast to that opinion, scientists who later conducted an analysis to determine the lion's diet figured that humans only made up about a third of what the lions actually ate. This only proved that, unlike the general opinion, humans served as supplements to the Savo lion's main source of nutrients. No doubt the drought and virus served as contributors to the big issue, but they probably weren't the actual reason these animals turned to humans for gain. Another thing that was put into consideration was the Savo River where the construction took place, which had a very dark history even before the man-eating lions became part of the region's problems. This same river had served as a major path for caravans in the Arab slave trade, and due to the sleeping sickness caused by the African tsetse fly, the death rate for the slaves was alarmingly high. The bodies of the dead slaves were therefore dropped on the route, leading lions straight to it to scavenge the remains indulging the specific cravings for more human flesh. After more research by experts, it was also discovered that one of the man-eaters had experienced a traumatic dental injury, which made it very hard for them to, you know, hunt their usual prey. And hence they decided to go for humans, as they had less speed, sight, hearing, and abilities, and were in every sense easy game. Seeing a troop of railway workers flood their territory only meant more food for them as they had encroached on the lion's nest. But that led to the final, most horrifying theory. That probably these massive man-eating Savo lions simply killed for the fun of it. Scary as it sounds, while Patterson had claimed that the lions had killed an insane number of 135 men, present scientific research showed that it only actually devoured about 35 of those people. Many believe that this dissimilarity was just Patterson simply boasting. However, it's very likely that while these lions may have actually killed all of those poor souls, they didn't eat a single one of their victims. And the lions' continuous hunt for the workers might have seemed like there was some sort of play involved. And aside from humans, lions still stand to be one of the few species that kill for sport. Also, considering the amount of testosterone the Savo lions possess compared to an average lion, their notorious aggression is somewhat justified. Whatever the reasons for the attacks were, the truth remains that one of the major reasons for lion attacks today is the rate at which humans continue to encroach upon and threaten lion's territory and habitat. So, you're only left to expect the worst when you get too close to a lion's den. Thanks for watching, we'll catch you in the next one.